Okay, ISDT, I think it's finally time. These 200 watt adapters have been heavily requested and it has taken me a long time to be able to get my hands on the 140 watt one port capable charger, but it's finally here along with its sibling. I think my review will be quite a bit different than the others out there. I've had a lot of disappointment in general with the 200 watt adapters available, but this one adds something none of the others have and maybe it will help it take the win or it's gonna be a complete failure. You know which one, don't you? Anyway, suggestions like this come from viewers like you, so keep them coming. The negotiation for multiple port operation will be looked at, along with lots of other features and functions. I will compare the other 200 watt adapters I have tested as well. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patron is live as well as the super button, thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. The 200 watt is pretty basic in the box. The power cord and a user manual and an adapter. The power cord is a normal figure eight plug type. It has four USB ports, 3C and 1A, as well as a 15 watt wireless charger. Serious doubts about that part, but I'm not gonna test it here. Okay, flipping it over and no DOE logo, no safety listing, Nothing really of any useful note here, just a lot of logos that don't have any substance behind them. Not a great sign. Okay, the power 200 watt adapter. So why does this thing exist and what do you think about this adapter? It has an apparent advantage in that it doesn't have to renegotiate the power on the various ports. So supposedly this adapter can deliver 65 watts to each USB-C port and also 10 watts to the USB-A port without any renegotiation. I'm gonna go over this part first because this is the selling feature of this adapter, and before I get too far, it's sort of true, except it has issues. And we're gonna get into that more later. The user manual is pretty standard. Probably the best part of this thing is the user manual. After that, it all goes downhill. It gives the modes of operations. It says PPS at least, so something to check. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this adapter is it has high idle power consumption like real bad, and it's not very stable. This does mean it doesn't meet the DOE requirements right off the bat or any requirements of anywhere. Where's the trash bin? I should stop. Oh, I'm gonna keep going. I shouldn't, but I am. Now that it's on, time to look at that shiny display. It's tiny and it doesn't tell you much. The watts it displays are not very accurate. No voltage or current display. There's an app, but it hasn't been updated in four years on the app store for iOS, and I'm gonna go with not trying the app. The main reason to install the app is it beeps when you plug in a cable and you can't turn it off without the app. What? Why does your power adapter need a beeper? For modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. The adapter also has a programmable power supply or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging of 21 volts. This is three amps, so it should support 25 watt Samsung fast charging, but it isn't going any further than that. It should be able to do that on all three USB-C ports though. So yes, that makes it 75 watts total. The power negotiation is the upside on this charger. It doesn't renegotiate. Each port is independent. The issue is that the ratings of the ports are the maximum values. They are the overload values essentially. So this just isn't a 200 watt adapter. It doesn't get that far. Oh, and it has a fan in it. We'll talk more about that in the other adapter. The data is not good. For one thing, not being able to get above 85% of the rated load is not great. Considering everyone else has been able to do this with no problem, the efficiencies are all very low. Then trying to get above the 85% mark always shuts something down. One of the ports fails if you try to draw any more watts. It isn't consistent and it isn't good. The upside is the power it does use is clean and the DC output actually doesn't look awful. The voltage is not bad and the AC power usage is okay, but the efficiency is bad. Very bad for adapter of this category. This all adds up to that fan that it has being instead of a feature, but a requirement. Ugh, this all sounds so doom and gloom. Can the 200X be the saving grace for these things? The unboxing experience is basically the same. The adapter has no extra markings. You do get two USB-C to C cables. I didn't check to see if these are real. Long past the point of carrying on this one. I'm jumping right into plugging this thing in. Just like the other one, this has terrible idle power consumption, so no improvement there. The fan, oh yeah, let's get to the fan. 
This is touted as a feature, and it is effective in keeping the case cool. Here are some thermal images of it in operation. Not bad, compared to the other 200 watt adapters with no fans, but the sound is a lot. Here's an example of what this thing sounds like. This thing is really loud. It appears to scale the fan speed with the power being used. So it isn't temperature controlled, it just runs all the time. And if you use more watts, it runs faster and louder. For modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode of 21 volts. This dropped out at 4.6 amps on the first port. The others are 3 amp capable. The 140 watt port is nice, but it doesn't matter. There's better options out there. When trying to get to 200 watts, it just displays 16 on the display and a warning. This doesn't go away until you unplug and replug the whole unit in. I assume this means overload, but it isn't an overload. It's just the rated load and it doesn't measure the power accurately. The adapter also suffers from renegotiation issues, just like other USB chargers on the lower wattage ports. So it loses the point of the 200 watt to add one high power port. The data on this one is very similar to the 200, but the 200X at least made it to 200 watts. It's loud, it's very inefficient, and the display stops working if you draw near the rated power level. So yeah, it's great, go buy 10 of them. That's sarcasm. I'm not sure why this exists. I thought the fan was only there to protect, but no, it's needed because these things have to reject a lot of heat. Overload is testing when devices protect in a fault condition. These devices didn't really have any headroom, so the overload level was the rated power level. They didn't go beyond that, but they did protect and shut down just over this range, or sometimes way under the range. The 65 watt port, or 40 watts, or 20 watts, sometimes 15, sometimes 50, not consistent. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to always have the waves look the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. Well, this actually has it. It actually looks very good. It just really is inefficient. The PFC circuit actually looks effective though. It has to do something good, right? The issue with this one is the lower efficiency means this has a 6 to 10% penalty versus other power adapters, and this directly translates to cost. That high idle means it costs even more to operate versus the competition. I'm skipping weights. There's no reason. In terms of a size comparison, these are a bit larger than the other 200 watt offerings out there. I think it is mostly to make room for the fan, which is effective at keeping things cool on the outside. Time to compare the data. I have tested several adapters in the 200 watt arena, so plenty to compare to. I threw a few others in too. When comparing the idle data with others, it's just not fair. These are up there with the Watobius 200 watt, which was also awful for idle power usage. The requirement is 0.3 watts or so, so over one watt is just not even close. I'm not sure what these are doing with that power since the fan doesn't run at idle and the display is very dim. On the idle graph, we get a good spread. It's not good. The ISDD chargers use too much power doing nothing. These are certainly not gonna be meeting that Department of Energy or any other country's energy efficiency requirements. That makes the Satoshi 165 watt look good, and that had too much idle power usage too. When comparing the overall data with other adapters, the ISDT is using too many watts. Remember, the 200 watt topped out at 170 watts, so that watt value should be the same as the 165 watt, lower being better here, and it just isn't close. These aren't playing the same sport as modern USB adapters. The power is very clean though. The one upside is the PFC circuit is actually effective, but it doesn't matter if it isn't efficient at converting AC power to DC. This is why single number metrics don't give the whole picture. Also, why watts are listed with the power quality. On the average power consumption graph, again, focus on that 165 watt Satoshi in the middle and compare that to the 200 or 170 watt as I called it, and how much space there is between those. That's the technology gap here. I don't know why they're so much worse. Let's talk about value. Well, no safety listing, lots of ports, and wattage that are very much peak values, not continuous values, means the value looks good. If you compare the peaks of other adapters to this value metric, it would probably shift things, but marketers be marketing. These aren't good value. The energy will cost and make up that difference anyway. On paper and ignoring the performance, sure, but that's back to that single number metric. There's always more to the story. Okay, well, that was a trip. 
I am being too mean, I think, but I'm just presenting the values and these just aren't in the same range as current offerings from others. These chargers may have modern features, but the idea that a fan isn't added as a keep the case and components cool feature, it's added as a because the efficiency is so poor that they need a fan, and yes, the fan is very loud. That alone is probably enough for most people to keep moving. The fan will keep the case cool, but based on how these smell under operation, something is getting very hot inside the case. So I don't think it's improving the lifespan over other offerings in the 200 watt category. The 200X has a more aggressive fan curve. The 200 just didn't do the watts it claims, topping out at 170 watts continuous. And that was tenuous. The no power negotiation USB ports are nice if it worked on all the ports, but again, falling short of that claimed power level. Are the tests difficult? Yes, but no other power adapters have had a problem getting through the tests. These struggled to even get through the tests. So what does that all mean? These are chargers. They technically work. Well, sort of. One of them does at least meet claims. The display is pretty weak in that it doesn't really show much. The wattage is off on the display by a bit. So adding features for features sake, and then again, lacking the power supply side, which really combines to some of the least efficient chargers I have seen yet. Oh, and the idle power is terrible, but at least there's an app. The app doesn't look like it gets updates though, so probably not worth it. For me, these are probably the most skip of anything I've tested yet. I had high hopes, again. I guess I really need to stop doing that since I keep being disappointed. I ran into a lot of problems testing these that really shouldn't have happened and doesn't happen with other adapters. Okay, time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database, and although they do have clean power usage, they are not efficient in that power usage. They have fans, they're loud, they need fans or they'd break quickly, and these are certainly not the ones for me, but if you want one, there will be affiliate links to other chargers in the description. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be putting these Nightcore power banks to the test next week. I went ahead and picked up two versions of the 20K, so we will see if there's any difference there, as well as the 10K MAH. I hope this 10K is good, since I want a more compact one for myself. There I go, having hope again. Check out my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have many more of these adapters and many more videos in the future. Goodbye.